It's lovely to be back at Worcester. It's only, it doesn't seem like a year since I was here. It's been a quick year, but can I add, it's been, um, for a leg club lead, it's actually been quite a difficult year for me. Um, things haven't been easy. Um, a lot of changes in England, Scotland, I think, are behind in, from what I'm hearing about some of the future changes that are happening here. But um, in this financial climate, I think leg clubs and things have been very difficult. LA has been wonderful to me and has been up to Scotland twice this year to support me. And because she's so enthusiastic, it just wears off you and you just decide, you know, get the head down and keep on going. Um, and the last time she was up at Scotland, she persuaded me to do this. So this is why I'm here. She's quite some woman. <laughs> um, we started off in a small day centre um, two and a half years ago. We outgrew that quite quickly. Um, we're up to about 178 members at the moment, carrying information back and forwards so we didn't know where to lock it. Um, just didn't work. So Ormiston's a rural area where I'm based. Um, we built a new community centre, so we asked if we could use it. Yes, um, so we've now moved to this new premises. We're now paying rent, but it's minimal, but there is so much bonus because we've got so much um, more room. We have a separate room for the clinical things, and it really has been a good move for us. As I said, this last year has been hard, and the reason it has been hard is staff in the leg club. This is where I've had the heartache recently. These are some of the members of our committee, and two of these girls here are actually representatives from supporters of the Lindsay Leg Club. Without the support, can I add, I probably wouldn't be standing here today. So I want to say thank you again to everybody who has helped me. I wanted, I was trying to think of the best way to do this presentation and what I'd like to gain from it. So I'm going to look at a personal, one of our members' personal viewpoint on well-being. I'm also going to look at the physical, uh, mental, social and spiritual changes in the well-being of our club members and look at a particular case study. And then I'm going to actually sort of have a quick overview of why leg clubs make a difference to well-being. So I got told what the title was, what is well-being? Um, talked to my team members in the office and we came up, we must have had a list, than A4 page crammed full and I thought, oh, this is too big. So I thought, right, I'm going to do a case study. I'd already decided who I was going to ask and get permission to do. So I thought, why don't I ask my lady, ask her what she thinks well-being is? Because she's had an ulcer and surely she can have the best sort of answer to my question. So in reply, I got in good health, comfortable, fortunate and in good condition. So after getting permission from my lady, um, I'm going to now talk about the case study. So in 2012, um, this lady appeared at the leg club. She wasn't actually in the area where I work, she was slightly out with, but as district nurses we work in large clusters now, so she was part of my cluster. She was 84 years old and she presented with an ulcer on her leg which she'd had for two years duration. Um, it was very painful and she'd been going to the local GP practice and had been getting it dressed for two years, approximately two years. Um, as we do in the leg club, we do a, um, a very thorough assessment on the first visit and we found, I found out she had arthritis, ischemic heart disease, coronary artery bile, the list goes on and on. Everything that you probably don't want to hear if you're trying to heal a leg ulcer. Um, she had varicose veins, she'd had a history of a DVT and as I said had an active leg ulcer which she'd had for two years. She was an ex-smoker and again we took her medication which consisted of diuretics, she was on warfarin, ramapil, cardiac drugs and things as well. At the time we did, I think leg clubs are very good, we listen to what our members say and Yes, I take on board what people say to me, but again, I, I went back to her and I asked her exactly how she felt when she first came to us. And basically, what you see here is what she told me. She felt unhappy. She was really fed up of having an, an leg ulcer. She thought, this is a burden to me. It's a burden to my life. I want rid of it. 
nothing seemed to be happening. Two years, she'd been going twice a week to be treated, and I've still got this on my leg. She couldn't have a bath. She felt that um, I've always got to have this plastic thing on my leg. It's not right. You know, I'm not getting the right wash and whatever. So she really was quite low in spirit. Um, we did a clinical examination, um, which confirmed peripheral arterial disease. Um, we do that with our AVPI. Um, her foot was cool, um, measured her ulcer. Ulcer bed actually was quite unhealthy, looked as if it was infected, swabbed it. Um, surrounding tissue, not good either, very dry, um, friable tissue. Not a lot of edema, but um, obviously very painful for this lady and completely changing the way her life was. As I said, she'd been treated by two years with a practice nurse. Visits tended to be about twice a week. Um, she'd had various treatments. When I asked her what she'd had previous, um, I mean, the list was massive. This is only some of them. Eosin, um, silver nitrate soaks. Her um, son had actually gotten a dressing from America, a brand new dressing, which she couldn't tell me the name of, that he'd got on the internet to try and see if this would help as well, which it didn't. And she'd been referred to the leg club by my colleagues, district nurses from that area. So following a full holistic assessment at the leg club, her uh, arterial, as I said, insufficiency, her ABPI was 0.61 to the left and 0.57 to the right. Um, for our sign guidelines, that tells me that she needs to be referred to vascular. There isn't, you know, there's no, we do it. However, on this occasion, um, this is what we do in leg clubs. We talk to our patient. Now, this patient had a history of multiple hospital admissions. She'd been through lots of surgery. She told me, I don't want to go back to hospital. I don't want to be referred back to any consultant or vascular or anything, you know. And I think, actually, when we looked at her medical condition, I don't know if they would have actively treated her anyway with all her comorbidities. Um, so I sat down and talked with them, and I said, well, you know, I think we still have a chance of maybe healing this ulcer. I've taken on board that you don't want to refer to vascular, but um, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and we'll contact your GP, um, because he wasn't known to me, I suppose. And I'll discuss it with the GP, and between the three of us, we'll see if we can come up with some kind of treatment regime for you. Um, so I did. I phoned the GP. The GP was... Um, yeah, very considerate, listened to what I said, and I said I was prepared to try um, a regime, but do it very slowly and gently with support, and if I had his support to do that without referring her to vascular. So he agreed. She agreed. So what we did, or what I started to do, was um, I introduced compression bandaging to her leg, which I know if you look at the ABPI, you think, mm. but we did it very, very slowly. Um, had a primary dressing over the ulcer, um, soft band, um, just a crepe bandage and then some comfy fast and so we just we introduced it very slowly and keeping an eye on it. She knew all the contraindications and just monitor very closely. In between that she had been seen by the practice now the leg club only we only on once a week one afternoon a week so I'd wrote a letter and I'd also phoned a surgery to see if the practice nurse could keep an eye monitor the leg and also do any treatment if the exudate levels were higher than what thought and she needed a change in between um, our visits uh, once a week could we coordinate the care. The following week, um, our lady, our member, returned and she was very, very upset. In fact, she was crying. And I said, you know, my immediate thing was, you know, there's something wrong with her leg and have I made things worse or what's happened? Is the pain worse? But basically what it was, she'd attended um, the medical centre and the practice nurse had refused to see her because she was coming to the leg club. Um, I found that very, very, very hard, you know, and I'm thinking, is this right? This can't be right because we work together. We work as a team. And surely, you know, we're only, we only open one afternoon a week. And we need to work together. If we don't work together, then this, is, isn't, this lady isn't going to get healed. Um, so I phoned the GP and also wrote a letter on her be behalf because she felt she wasn't able to take this back to the surgery, although it had really, really, and I mean really upset her. It took us a long time to get her calmed down. Um, from that, we decided, and she felt she didn't want to go back to the surgery after that. 
it had affected her so much she just felt that she couldn't go back with her leg. So we agreed that we would just see her once a week and her husband was actually quite active in things as well so we kind of negotiated with him if, if, if a top of a dress needed to change he would only change the top and things but we, we, got, we managed between the, the three of us. So this was our arterial ulcer on the 4th of April. Um, so when she came to us every week, we'd complete the skin care as necessary because you know, that's very, very important. We applied a primary dressing and we, as I said, we started the reduced compression system, monitoring her very closely. So I said the first sort of couple of weeks, it was a soft band, you create bandage and comfy fast. As I realised that this was fine, we weren't getting any contraindications, the next time I actually put the crepe bandage on a figure eight, just to give that little bit more oomph. And we monitored her pain on every and actually how she felt. She actually started to say to us, even before, long before we, we completed this, that uh, um, coming to us and talking to other people, and she felt we were listening to what she wanted, um, that she's starting to feel better, which was good. That's what we're there for. So we started to actually see a continuing improvement of our arterial ulcer. Further reductions in our pain and exudate levels happened gradually over the weeks, and that actually made her feel better, which was really important to us. Granulation tissue increased, and the ulcer started to reduce in size. Three and a half months later, um, she arrived, and I took everything off, and wow, this was healed. Now, um, for us guys, you know, we were all way and you know, really, really, really pleased, really pleased. And yes, this year has been really hard, and I sometimes think, you know, a little bit of me thinks, is this, is the leg club, can I keep on fighting for it? But yes, I can, because it's worth. You only need one member to be healed after having two years of pain and distress and really feeling low about herself to be healed, and you know it is worth it. Every single, every single thing that we do is worth it. Um, we tentatively put a dressing on for about three weeks after that to protect it, because I was terrified in case it broke down again, I must be honest with you. But anyway, now she's, we've got a measure, she's in compression hosiery. Um, she knows where we are. Well, I'll get her back in six months of reassessment and new hosiery. She knows where we are if she, if she needs us. I phoned her, obviously, to get consent about this. Her leg is still fine, the ulcer is healed, and she's very, very happy, and so am I. So actually, what, what is well-being? Um, I asked her on, over the phone, because she's quite a shy lady now, I said, could I get a photograph? And, no, 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 you're not having my photograph. <laughs> anyway, so, right. So I said to her, well, what, what do you think? You tell me what it is. So she said, being very well, She's relieved now. She feels she's got this burden. It's lifted off her, and she can start to enjoy life again. She's 84, but she's, act she's got a young mind, and she wants to get on and enjoy whatever the time she has. She said to me, I've got rid of it at last. It's a way. Um, it had been a burden. It was a burden. Now she feels great. And she said, ah, at last I can have a normal bath. They're only, I mean, a bath may be a small thing, but to most people... It actually isn't. It's a big thing. So why does a leg club make a difference? Well, I was trying to think about this, and I'm thinking, what, what is different about having a clinic or me going in as a district nurse in a patient's house? So I think, when I have my district nursing, going away from the mic, district nursing uniform in the morning, and then I have my leg club hat on in the afternoon. So what, what is the difference for me? I'm more relaxed in the afternoon, as what I am in the morning. I have more time, I would say, because of the way things are at the moment, and I think all of us know that. So actually, we were talking about listening yesterday in one of the things, and I think I listen better at the leg club than what I do in the morning, because my head is actually full of all these other things that are going on in my district nursing role. So we listen, we look, we actually talk to our patients, we get down, we spend time with them. Maybe, that's a, maybe a talk is actually all they need, they might not need active care, they maybe just need us to actually listen, sit, and hear what somebody's saying. We touch, and I think most of all is actually we care. And that's, that's why it, it's very important that we continue and 
if anybody else is in the same situation as me, as I would urge you to continue to keep the leg club going because they're very important. Thank you.